What's up guys, my name is Matt and today I've got a pretty cool video for you guys. This is going to be my Overkill AMD APU home theater and gaming PC. Now just as a disclaimer, I don't necessarily recommend you replicate this build. I'm just making this build to show off a bunch of products that I think are cool and also to prove a concept. So when building this APU home theater gaming PC, I had a couple of criteria that I wanted it to meet. First of all, I want it to be super compact and also look really good in a living room setting. Second of all, I wanted it to be fairly quiet so that it wouldn't be distracting when watching movies or playing games. I wanted it to be able to play some basic games. Now keep in mind this is an APU build, so it's not gonna be playing all the newest titles at the highest settings or anything. And finally, I wanted it to be super fast in terms of boot time and just overall snappiness when navigating through the UI. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So like I said in the intro, this PC is kind of a way for me to prove a concept and show off a bunch of cool PC hardware. So the thing that kind of got me started with this build is the PC case. This case is a Silverstone ML09 home theater PC case. It's super compact, very space efficient, and looks great. It fits mini ITX motherboards, SFX power supplies, and only half height expansion cards. Now like I said in the intro, this PC is featuring an AMD APU, which for those of you that don't know, an APU is a CPU and graphics processor on a single chip, and these APUs actually aren't terrible for light gaming, which we'll see in a minute. The APU used in this build is the quad-core AMD A10 7850K, which while it isn't the most high-end APU available, it definitely gets the job done. The CPU is sitting inside of an ASRock FM2A 88X-ITX Plus motherboard, which as the name implies, it's an FM2 Plus motherboard with an A88X chipset, meaning you can overclock on this motherboard. Some of the other nice features are the built in Wi-Fi and lots of SATA 6 ports, but we actually won't be needing any of those SATA ports which I'll discuss in a little bit. Overall, this motherboard is very feature rich and fits this build well. Cooling this CPU is one of the best low profile coolers on the market, which is the Noctua NH-L12. This cooler features two fans, but I only used the bottom one because there was such limited height in this compact case. This cooler features a pretty unique design with plenty of nickel plated copper heat pipes and aluminum fins. This cooler allowed for great cooling while also staying extremely quiet. This cooler along with two more Noctua 80mm PWM fans allowed for amazing airflow while keeping very quiet. In terms of RAM, APUs benefit from faster RAM because both the CPU and GPU are sharing the same RAM, so what I went with was 8GB of 2100MHz of Exer RAM, which is plenty of room and speed for any game or application this PC can run, and also leaves an extra slot open for future expansion. Now because this is an APU and a GPU wasn't needed for this build, I decided to make use of the open X16 PCIe slot on the motherboard by filling it with a PCIe NVMe SSD. Now what I used was the Toshiba slash OCZ RD400. This is a crazy fast PCIe based SSD, my review of which will be up in a couple of days. This is a PCIe SSD in an M.2 form factor, and even though this motherboard doesn't have an M.2 slot, the included board allows us to interface the SSD directly with any PCIe X4 or larger slot. Now this SSD isn't cheap, but having this super fast storage allows for crazy fast boot up times, fast loading times, and overall improved snappiness of the system. I went for a smaller, faster SSD as opposed to a larger mechanical drive or SATA SSD because I feel that most people building an HTPC are going to have their large files like movies already on a NAS or other similar external storage device. Powering this system is the SFP small form factor 300 watt power supply that fits well in this build and is 80 plus certified and is actually reasonably quiet. All of this put together, you have a pretty interesting system. Now, though the main purpose of this system isn't necessarily gaming, I did decide to test some lighter titles to show you guys exactly how this PC performs in them. The games tested are League of Legends, CSGO, Minecraft, and Overwatch. Starting with CSGO at 1080p high settings, I was able to achieve an average of 55 FPS, which is pretty decent, and the FPS could easily be increased with a bump down in graphical quality or resolution. For Minecraft, with max settings and the highest render distance, this PC was able to achieve a 30 FPS average, which is pretty good. For League of Legends at 1080p with the highest settings, this PC was able to get 65 FPS average, which provided some very smooth gameplay. 
Finally, for Overwatch at 1080p low settings, this PC managed to receive an average of 34 FPS, which is decent, but not all that enjoyable. So as you can see, for light gaming, this PC actually does decently well, and even more demanding games are playable, but definitely need lower graphical quality or resolution. Overall, I like this system a lot and think I was able to meet all the criteria I had originally set out to accomplish for this build, though all the products used in this build I do recommend, I don't necessarily recommend using them in this exact combination, just because you're definitely not getting the most performance you could for the money. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more technology and PC related content in the future, and as always this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.